six out of the 20 amino acids can readily be metabolized into pyruvate. And because of that, we call them glucogenic. Remember, inside our liver, we can transform pyruvate into oxaloacetate, and then the oxaloacetate is transformed into glucose via gluconeogenesis. And that's why we call them glucogenic. Now, some of these are actually ketogenic as well, but let's not talk about that. So let's begin with cysteine. So we see that cysteine, alanine, tryptophan, glycine, serine, and threonine can all be transformed into pyruvate. So let's begin with cysteine. Now, the conversion of cysteine into pyruvate is actually pretty complicated because there are several different pathways by which cysteine can be transformed into pyruvate. So we're not going to look at the details of those steps or those pathways, but I will mention that in the conversion of cysteine to pyruvate, we have to somehow remove this sulfur atom. And so depending on the pathway that is followed, that sulfur atom is released as either thiocyanate, hydrogen sulfide, or sulfur trioxide, and we ultimately form the pyruvate. Now, let's move on to the conversion of alanine into pyruvate. Now, we actually discussed this before. So, we saw that alanine could be transformed to pyruvate in a single step, in a single transamination step. And the enzyme that catalyzes this is known as alanine aminotransferase. So, this enzyme utilizes a coenzyme, PLP, so paradoxal phosphate. And so alanine basically reacts with alpha ketoglutarate. So we essentially transfer the amino group from alanine to alpha ketoglutarate. We form pyruvate and glutamate as a result. And the pyruvate we see is formed in a single step. Now, in the second step, not shown here, we have the glutamate and we transform that glutamate into, well, we actually release the ammonium, uh, uh, the ammonium group from the glutamate and we reform that alpha ketoglutarate. And in this process, we have to use an NAD plus or NADP plus as well as a water molecule to basically remove that ammonium from glutamate. So that's how we go from alanine to pyruvate. Now, tryptophan basically is transformed into pyruvate by first converting tryptophan to alanine, and then alanine basically follows this step to form the pyruvate. Now, let's move on to serine. So serine can be transformed to pyruvate, and we actually saw before that this was a two-step process, and this was catalyzed by serine dehydratase. So in the first step, we basically have a water molecule that leaves. So we have the combination of this hydroxide, so the hydroxide group combines with this H plus ion to form a water, and the two electrons in this bond basically form a double bond between this carbon and this carbon, and we form this high energy intermediate molecule, amino acrylate. And then the amino acrylate basically undergoes a hydrolysis step, or said another way, a deamination step in which we have the water molecule kicking off this ammonium group. And so we form this pyruvate as a result. And so again, the enzyme that catalyzes the step is serine dehydratase. Now, glycine can actually be transformed into pyruvate by first transforming the glycine into serine. And the way that we form the serine from glycine is by adding a hydroxymethyl group. So where does that hydroxymethyl group come from? Well, from, an, and from a molecule known as 5,10-methylene THF, where THF stands for tetrahydrofolate. So we have glycine in the presence of water and in the presence of this molecule 5,10-methylene tetrahydrofolate basically undergoes a reaction that is catalyzed by serine hydroxymethyltransferase. And so what this enzyme does is it ultimately transfers this group here, shown in blue, as well as uses the water molecule to actually attach that hydroxide group onto glycine. So ultimately, we attach a hydroxymethyl group onto the glycine to form our serine. And so then the serine, we actually also form the THF, the tetrahydrofolate, and then the serine basically follows these steps that we have on the board. 
Now, what about the last one, threonine? So threonine can be transformed into pyruvate via an intermediate molecule known as 2-amino-3-ketobutyrate. So first, we transform threonine into 2-amino-3-ketobutyrate, and then we transform that molecule into pyruvate. So these are the six amino acids that can readily be transformed into pyruvate molecules. We have cysteine, tryptophan, glycine, alanine, serine, and threonine.